by now, y'all know we can stand that ground. You be looking at the table, that's the attitude. Got a little thumb that I gotta prove. From the bottom, we just doing what we gotta do. I put that crew on my shoulder, got a lot to lose. Yeah, going for that gold post. Blowing through the red when the road grows, y'all know. We ain't quitting when we so close. And the victory is really what it's all for. Yeah, you looking at the champs right now. Turning up the amps right now. You looking at the champs right now. Y'all know we can stand that crowd. You been looking at the champs. Yeah. Myself, throw it all down, yeah. You against me is like sound, and we can handle this right now. I'ma hit them with the one. We ain't getting tired, go the hardest. Two, gotta tap into where your heart is. Three, stand up for your people, that's for starters. And four, never say yourself short on them all. Yeah. Looking at the champs right now, turning up the amps right now. You looking at the champs right now, y'all know we can stand that ground. You been looking at the champs. Yeah. 
All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Tech Yeah. I hope everybody's doing well. I did not realize I still had this on. One second here. And my monitor on. I don't really need to hear the background music per se. Uh, trying to keep the mic uh, from flipping as much. It seems to be picking up a wee bit better uh, than I was expecting it to from this distance. So yeah, this is my office. It's kind of uh, in disarray. You kind of see this stuff laying around. I've been working on putting this uh, computer inside of this desk uh, and it's actually turned out really, really well. So well, in fact, that I've got it set up now for streaming. We're streaming via Debian 12 Linux, which I'm glad I was actually able to get going. Uh, it gives me a lot of with using it as a platform. Now, obviously, a machine that's powerful enough, you're going to want to run Proxmox or TrueNAS or something because you're going to be running multiple virtual machines. But when it comes to running a single web server or service or whatever, these, uh, these little mini PCs here, these here. So this uh, was like 140, 150 on Amazon, but the Ryzen 3 3250U or something like that's like nothing super spectacular. Two cores, four threads, probably about in the same realm of power, maybe a little more than uh, than you would get with the Celeron, but you're not getting a true four cores, but you still have four threads. So, but. So far, what I've seen, this little device boots up really fast, it's neat, but, you know, I have a various amount of these, most of them still have Windows on it, but um, for a few clients, uh, what I've done is put Debian Linux on these and run an Apache web server, and then what we can do is install things like MariaDB, and then we can put WordPress directly on this box, and we can access it from the internet. Uh, so you could just plug this in, you know, next to your router, or at, you know, because it doesn't need a monitor, and you can log into it remotely, even the desktop. But uh, once you have your, you know, your WordPress, uh, which is essentially your website, your website, your website content management system, uh, once you have that up and running, you know, uh, a lot of the web page creation and blog management and all that is handled by WordPress. Uh, so you do that all through the browser anyways. Uh, so it doesn't really take a lot of CPU headroom per se to do that. So I got this uh, device uh, from a local business owner a week or so ago. I took it on the road with me uh, as my last live stream, if anybody caught it. Um, check chat here real quick. Okay chats all right just had to double check uh because i'm streaming on linux so everything is just a little bit different than what i'm used to like obs is here and we're connected and that's great uh but like the live chat plugin isn't here and and i'm also running xfce as my desktop uh environment this time around instead of doing gnome uh because of I'm playing around with different setups uh, because I'm trying to get a remote desktop situation. I want, since I have this desk built, and I'm trying to avoid using Windows, it's, I don't have anything in here against Windows other than it's not a free product that requires licensing. And, you know, it, it works. Windows does works when you need it to. It has its works. It's had its works for 30 years. It's always going to have good. Stream. Store here in a minute. Oh. 
the life is at work. Okay, so anyways, these are an excellent way of getting a website up run. I mean, you have a couple of options. You could pay monthly, you can go get you a Squarespace or what have you. You know, they give you a lot of creative control. But for a few things, especially if you're wanting to develop your own web application, having your own web server uh, is ideal, especially if you can start real small with the Apache and a database backend. And as you scale up, you can start getting into Nginx and you can start deploying stuff through node.js. And there's, there's like things you can do, but it, there's so many options start from really simplistic literally apache to writing text in a file in vs code saving it and then bringing it up in the browser i mean like you can start that basic still i mean html after all even though it's changed over the last 30 40 years is it's still a scripting language it's still inherently what it always was so anyways Let's get this plugged in. Um, I've already logged into this and gotten the uh, Windows uh, 11 key that came with it. Uh, a lot of these mini PCs come with a copy of Windows 11. So if you want to run a server and you get one of these, it's, it's a really good way to get a Windows key uh, because obviously you're never going to run Windows on this. But you might put it back on here at some point. You never know. So it's good. You might have another one. You might be like me, have a good selling computer. You never know when that might come in handy. Um, anyways, what I've done uh, with the desk here actually is I've integrated my HDMI capture and everything into the desk here. So I'm going to plug this into the desk like so. And then we go. Let's get our mouse keyboard set up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it here real quickly. Okay, it's still nothing. So, with any computer system, you need your installation media. Now, typically, I would use Ventoy. Uh, for something like this, but Debian 12 is a little new and just I wanted to try it uh, first and actually now I really like it. Uh, and I'm already really used to Debian, so I really need to add this to ISO to my Ventoy, but you know, I don't think I'm going to be using very many other distributions of Linux, so I this is what is what it is. There is that uh, Fedora that I really want to try. There's a couple of them. I, ha I have Vanilla OS on my Ventoy too that I haven't tried yet. Um, I'm really intrigued by the idea of the uh, mutable like Linux, uh, where you just you can have app pack you can like have all the different package managers because the core of the operating system is separate from. It really intrigues me. I just I haven't spent a lot of time with it and I don't necessarily understand it. So because of that, it's just something I haven't really Yeah. But anyways. Uh whether it's floppy C D or USB stick, that's this is where everything always starts. So let's go ahead and get our USB stick plugged into the little mini PC here. sure what the sequence of numbers would be in for the BIOS. Oh, ooh. That's what I mean. This thing just like boots really, really fast. Okay, so we have the five. Fine. This is 
this for her. Up really quick, just the camera here. Yeah, that's what I need to get to. Yeah. Looking at the same screen you guys are right now because everything is built into streaming desk. Because everything's built into the desk, that's kind of the overall goal. I wanted it to be this way, uh, so I could do everything live. But not only if I was going to use it for a stream, just for some fact that I don't need a separate monitor. I don't really need to separate anything. I could just set a tower here under the desk, plug it in, put the HDMI cable in, and boom. You know what I mean? Being a way of plugging the system in without having. Your root is already disabled, so that's that's odd. I've not seen that yet on any Windows 11 system that I've got. Even these mini PCs typically um, always have your boot enabled, so I guess okay. Let's go this. I really don't need to mess with anything else right now. Oh, never mind. I don't even need to do that. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll come back in. Okay, so we're just going to use a boot override. Now, one thing we do need to check real quick for uh, sometimes. looking for is a power setting actually um so this power setting it's a uh, we're looking for a power setting that basically sets it to always on i have little to no idea exactly this into that later let's go ahead and get into this installation that's the most important part of uh, the boot uh, the always on setting basically what it's going to do is it's going to set this thing to truly like operate basically uh, like a router would so it's it'll always turn itself on um i guess for the prettiness of the stream we'll just go through the graphical install this thing, for being two cores and four threads, is chewing through the uh, operating system three times. So, yeah, it's the... I mean, it's it's a USB 2.0 uh, flash drive that we're operating off of, so it's like literally the slowest flash that you can imagine in the world right now. But so far, I'm liking the XFC uh, layout. I, I've used LXDE in the past. I really like GNOME, but it has a lot of flares and animations and other things that just, even if you can get remote GPU acceleration running, and you can, whether you have AMD or NVIDIA, it's like either way it goes, um, regardless of which one that you have it's still just more taxing on your system and even though i have a decent fiber connection uh, here that really doesn't mean a whole lot uh, sometimes when you are still asking it to do all this stuff and like even though you have a high amount of speed 
uh, depending on where you're at trying to remotely access and how many different things uh, or what the route looks like that it has to take to get to the device you're trying to remotely access, uh, asking it to do a bunch of extra silly things like make the icon wiggle when you click it or make the window sweep up and you know like bounce out and do all that kind of stuff like that stuff looks really really cool and that's great uh when you're sitting next to the machine but for a server when you're really just going to be using the graphical environment if you're ever going to use it at all it's really just going to be for navigation through the file structure basically and right clicking in folders and hitting uh open terminal here because that's where you're going to be getting your system like this is in the command line so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our default uh connection right now i don't have uh ethernet i'm the upstairs of my uh house here so i rent and i can't just be drilling holes around ethernet all over the place so unfortunately the desk pc and what we're working on the server right now is uh wireless but that is not going to be the case after we get done with all of this i'll take it out to the workshop and actually plug it into the the switch out there and make sure that it's configured appropriately uh via ethernet but the method of connection is really uh, relevant for our means and purposes for setting this stuff up because we're just going to be accessing it via the local host anyways uh for right now so i'm not going to get into getting your recording and all that set up we'll do that at a future point if anybody is interested on how exactly we pass this through to the internet and actually turn it into a dot com or a dot net or you know whatever so i'm going to go ahead and hit my wireless here and we're going to switch over our camera view a second Uh, <laughs> oh. the Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you guys thought you were gonna get my Wi-Fi password. Yeah, <laughs> there's a reason that I did that. I can't just be like giving personal information. You know what I mean? But other than that, the methods are the same. I mean, this is only for the intents and purposes of this tutorial. Our host name, uh, in this case, uh, it's going to be. I can't even remember what we're going to call the web app. So for now, we're just going to call it.
main name we're going to leave blank that's kind of not important for our purposes right now that's for in the future uh, but a lot of that also will just kind of be handled through a lot of configuration files uh, through the web server there might come a time once you want to get too legit to quit and actually get your website you know more than just a let's encrypt and a, you know a simple who is once you want to actually get you know start getting into the nitty-gritty of you know putting your web application onto like a kubernetes cluster you know what i mean like expanding your website out to more than just one web server node you know what i mean like once you want to actually start getting into that kind of complex stuff you might want to look Okay. User is gonna be game. 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 Just kidding. Okay. So these two areas that I just went through are very, very important. Uh, that we distinctualize that they're two very different things. Okay. Kind of flew through it and didn't realize that, especially if somebody has not ever done this before. So getting a USB setup is really, really easy. I recommend using Elena Etcher if you've never done it before or Rufus for a more practical means of doing it, or if you are already used to moving around ISO files and stuff, you can even here. There's other Linux tools. There's several ways to make a USB drive, but if you're on Windows and you want to try something like this out, the great thing about the newest Debian 12 is that the live version actually gives you the option to persist the live install, and then you can get all your package updates through app, which is really, really neat because Debian's kind of slow to adopt certain things. Like they've had a live distro for a while, but you usually didn't have the option to install the live distribution. You had to download a separate ISO, so, so that's different now. So other than that, once you get an ISO and you download it and you get to this point, root user is basically you can think of that kind of like the windows administrator in a way it's kind of a poor way to describe it a lot of people especially if you watch videos on youtube of people that do linux or computers in general a lot of people will kind of not know how to explain this and, and it's trust me I, it's it's hard to draw parallels that's basically the overall language right but it still goes without saying it's kind of a way to recognize you know it's a little bit harder you know windows you right click it you run as administrator you click the yes button not a, i mean once because you're already logged in right it's it's a kind of really painless and effortless on windows but not so much on linux uh things that you want to execute as as root in this case or uh, you know as super user when you want to do that everything in linux is a file so once things are edited there's, there's really good potential to screw things up that's the problem so especially not so much with like application installs anymore that sort of thing especially through apps which is one of the reasons why i like debian so much uh is relatively easy it's it's kind of painless, but at the same time, it's more complex than doing something in Windows. There's no right-click running as administrator, so you really have to kind of get used to the command line. Uh, but in the beginning, at least especially, which I will show you because we're going to go through this uh, as the setup process, because we, we really don't ever want to be using this password, especially in Debian, other than we'll use it once to switch user to root after we very first install the operating system and then what we need to do is user mod our game user 
in the sudoers list and basically make the game user uh pseudo administrator it's funny how it works out it's super user do or whatever but it's funny because you know pseudo p s c u d you know that pseudo spelling of pseudo is you know like pseudo science it it's funny it kind of works out because you're a pseudo administrator it's you know it's just too convenient how that worked out i think but like i said i'm just basically a casual linux user through the years um i'm a comptia uh net plus certified and then i went through the a plus stuff but i never like paid for the test because especially especially if you look at like building pcs now like a, the a plus certification is a lot different now than it was what it was because like even my net plus i have like the grandfathered net plus that basically it, is perpetual forever where new new entrants have to retake every two to four years or whatever it is and it's the same thing with a plus so a plus encompasses you know even basics of linux now so it's a lot of things have definitely changed so i would call myself at best a, a kind of a casual but at the same time at my job I do this kind of varied thing and I manage uh, a geo server and I've been figuring out how to do map translations and work with overhead imagery and stitching thousands and millions of, it, of images together. Yeah, that's not even thousands. Of millions. So anyways, because uh, I work for a 3D mobile mapping company uh, or we make a software, we do more than just the 3D mobile mapping we do said tracking and management and you know all sorts of things uh anyways if you want to check that out you can always check us out at online mastermind.com uh, yeah and that's our website you can check us out there there's uh, some information and contact form to get in touch with us uh if you happen to be on my stream for some shot in the wild dark that you're some sort of county official or a city engineer or township official or somebody that manages road signs culverts or any of that sort of thing and has been doing it through an excel spreadsheet you know you might want to check that out but anyways i don't have anything prepared i just that's my life currently other than this so Anyways, this is something you want to do. Remember, but what, remember, we, we we really don't want to use this more than once. There there might be a few niche times where you might have to use somebody's script after you've read it a bazillion times to make sure it's not going to nuke your system with no RM dash RF nonsense. Uh, that's a very real uh, thing. That you'll go through if you're new to Linux, but anybody that knows Linux knows. So I'm gonna check my chat. No chats yet. So we're gonna go ahead and set the root password. Make sure that you remember it well. Write it down somewhere. Do not forget it. It's not a good thing. about that with the 256 gigabyte so the other good thing about um unless somebody's watching me in chat i'm doing the wrong thing uh the lvm i really haven't found you know what i mean because you're already there's already so much performance going on there i don't know that's really i don't know like i have it set up on most of my desktops but this thing's going to be like plugged in somewhere on a web server Nothing really plugged into it, so I don't know if really the point in using LVM on this small of a drive or I don't know. You could always 
post it in the chat if you have an answer because I have no idea. Anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna march forward here. All right, set it up here. We're gonna do, and I would suggest, you know, unless you have multiple drives, to probably just all files in one partition. Uh, even if you have multiple drives, still all drives on partition. Uh, dedicate the one drive, let it auto set up. You know what I mean? It'll set up swap space and all that stuff. I usually I used to take such pride. You know, back in the early 2000s, it could, I'd manually partition a drive and swap. And, you know, I knew how to set up extension 3 and all that stuff. Like, I could actually make a computer run Linux. A lot of people didn't know how to do that to their computer. They got it from, like, Radio Shack and it ran Windows, and that's all they really knew about it. Uh, so, like, it was cool that I could actually do it uh, through the tools uh, that Linux had at the time. I used Mandriva or Mandrake Linux back then. To anybody that knows what Mandriva or Man, it was Mandrake Linux first. That's why I used it. I didn't really care for the name change to Mandriva, but I still used it while it existed. And they kind of still exist as like a cloud compute uh, sort of uh, infrastructure. It's not really remote desktop it's like a remote thing they, i don't know i don't know they might their technology might have been absorbed into a zen server actually i'm not 110 percent sure i just know that they had an awesome version of linux and that's what introduced me to kde desktop environment and like having multiple desktop environments so that got me into linux back then when i was in high school It is taking me on. I can't hear the music. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing at this point. It's kind of dull. Obviously, we want to use network mirror. States. Good. I'm not using the proxy. Okay, and one of the crazy things that you're actually going to see here in just a second is that we're going to go with XFCE, obviously, for now, because that's what I've been using on this other machine, and I like to stay with what I have fresh in my head. And that, and I just, I'm liking the very simplistic nature of this, especially for a remote machine. Yeah, here. Almost Windows S bar, but it's on the top of the screen show you that's the desktop but i guess the top bar is uh being rendered in that shot for whatever reason sorry if that music just restarted i'm terribly sorry about that i did not think about that it's probably been playing long enough it's a little change I didn't mean to be switching over to that input at all. I'll just to show you kind of what, what you see in here in a second. That's just what the desktop on this particular machine looks like at the time. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Now we be in the popularity contest. Yeah. Okay, so we could just set up you know, all this stuff and even you know, get our text client set up for remote access uh, through here and take the you know, the auto setup method. But uh, if, you're, if you've not ever done it, then I wouldn't recommend doing it that way because you're not really going to know uh, where to be operating in and out of unless you've seen something like this. So for now, we're going to unselect the domain. Select XFC. And it's just gonna keep pumping. We're gonna keep on trucking. Trucking, trucking.
You know, the cool thing for being a little dual core is uh Glad we didn't get a Celeron. Nothing I mean the new N one hundred and two hundreds actually might be okay against this, but the idea of this wasn't to turn it into a steam box, but I really would uh, like to explore that. I've got that Ryzen 5 56, whatever it was, the 5625 or whatever, that the P Link SCR5. I have that APC, but I'm not sure if I want to commit that one because the wifey knows how to use it and navigate it, and I'm not sure if I really want to uh, do that. Give me just a second here, I'll be right back, we'll just watch this bar. Nope, we're working on it. We're live streaming right now. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. 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 My son, Um Bub. All right, Bub. Installation is pleased. Time to blah 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 blah. blah, blah. So that's well, we're good to go here. We'll go ahead and click continue. Yep, it's pretty much almost done, buddy. We really got too far to go. We put in a couple of text commands to install our web server. I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, I mean, um, YouTuber, uh, YouTuber vlog. It's actually, let's see. What did you say? Vlog. <laughs> Frog, yeah, you're gonna get me banned, buddy. I mean, Frog, okay, yeah, clock, yeah. Clock, clock. Frog, okay, I got you, buddy. I yeah. wear clocks. <laughs> you do, which is funny. All right. Getting game. Okay, there we go. Pretty uneventful, and we are in. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut my cam off for just a second there. So as you can see, this kind of a mix between like modern and Windows 1998. It's like a real, but at the same time, you've still got your multiple uh, workspaces up here. You have all of your modern. You know amenities you could have this very useful uh, menu that you can bring up over here to which anywhere you right click you know it's 
it's funny too sometimes when you come from like a Windows 11 where you have to right click and then go to click and then click more options and that you know what I mean like it, but you have all of just like this stuff by default here uh, not to say that Windows doesn't have similar things but it's just times this very plain and simple looking interface it's still very intuitive I like anyway we're gonna move forward now so we're going to move open up our terminal and okay buddy high five all right okay so like I said before we do need to switch user man that we're not really gonna ever use very often unless you become uh, a systems administrator of some sort or you're gonna be managing a lot of user accounts through a Linux machine which is very possible it's really easy to set up one of these machines and use it as a it's like a desktop server where you could have a bunch of thin clients connecting to it uh, via XRDP etc and you can have a bunch of multi bunch of different users on the machine but anyways this is where we want to remember su which is switch user and we're going to switch to root this is where we want to put in our root password now you did there's no glitch there you didn't see anything not even a little asterisk get typed in because the way the linux the, the bash terminal the way it that works is by default any passwords that you type in are passed so if you fudge it you have to type it in again and if you fudge it what you're doing too many times it will just have these cases uh, now in some cases you can just keep repeatedly doing it until you get it right kind of scary right? but most of that i think is on Supporting, but anyhow, uh, but something to keep in note if you think you fat fingered a key, just hit backspace several times until you think you got that and just retype it in because it's better safe than sorry, especially when you can't see the characters. But you weren't seeing things there that's intentional. So, next thing we need to do is our sudo that we did before it doesn't make any sense to me why I need to sudo something when I'm root but if I try to do using on little a big G what's going on and then I do uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. User mod, no, okay. But now if we hit the up arrow and reprint that out, put sudo in front of it. Now it's gonna say, okay, so now we just need to push this. I always do that. It's like I'll go for a little while without setting up a Linux system and then There we go. We have our commands successfully entered. Okay. Yeah. So how we can uh, we can exit our switch user now. Even now, if we try to do a sudo as our game user, which is how we're logged in right now, if we try to say sudo apt update and we put in user password it's going to say we're not in the CBWorks file uh, because the way uh, Linux boot and everything works now there are ways to kind of make this uh, refresh itself but I just found the easiest method is is to just uh, obviously can't do it through there um, so it's easiest to just get out of here Click up here at our username. Shut down. So we stop it.
Okay. And I guess we'll just shut it down and restart it. It's weird that there's no restart option there. It's strange. Right? Um, am I weird for thinking that's strange? I don't think that's weird. I, I mean, I think that's weird. I don't think it's strange. I think that's weird is what I meant to say. How fast this boots? Just press the power button. Okay. Dude, you know, for a little dual core four thread, I mean, can you really complain about that at all? I mean, you're in a full ready to go i mean it's not like windows doesn't be fast anymore but the faster you know the more you add to it and that like nowadays as soon as you get all your steam installed and you, even a new install will get but well, it's slower than that with discord and everything else that you're like i said the parallels are hard to draw it's kind of server system Gotta quit talking to talk. Let's get in here. I have to bring our terminal back open again and we try to update. Right? Bring a bunch of keys. Just kidding. Alright. Oh, stupid. Okay, so it's basically telling me uh, I don't have a CD-ROM plugged in uh, because I don't. Because obviously this uses a DVD. Right. Just kidding. It's a mini PC. It has nothing. So what we're going to do is get into our synaptic package manager. It took me a minute to figure this out. Uh, before with XFC, you see in a lot of other desktop environments, there's a like a software store, but it's really just a graphical front end for uh, in most cases. But it's like a only protect only the apps that have bothered to like really upload like a functional software and icon and you know what I mean like there's so much in the Synaptic package manager like just so much stuff uh in here but it took me a little minute to figure out that i didn't see the the gnome store application or any of that so i had to figure out where repository settings were, which were in here so we're going to go ahead and actually take this one out it's going to remove cd-rom entirely Packages. Go back here and do that one more time. All of our packages are up to date. Obviously, we just installed, so we really shouldn't have any sort of issues like that. So let's go ahead and just kind of get started here. The very first thing that we want to do now that we have the ability to update the system. We can do all this sort of thing. Start getting stuff installed, obviously. So, thing here. What do we got first? This says do this. So, I have this text file that I had put together, but it seems to be half missing for whatever reason. Just one moment. 
So what we need to do, I guess, uh, we'll just start with the basics at least. We'll do a uh, sudo apt install. Uh, is it Apache? And then uh, what else do we need? Apache 2, MariaDB server. Really going to be it. Man, this thing is quick. For a little, you know, that's, I'm su surprised, I guess. I'm not, not surprised, but like pleasantly uh, amused. I'm definitely excited uh, to get this kind of performance uh, out of this little thing. Okay, sorry about that. I definitely was uh, you know, expecting it to be good with this little running. And one thing I really haven't checked. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so what how much are we actually using is the question. <laughs> oh well, you know. Only 198 process, you know, like you compare that to what's, you know, it's still not bad. Barely using any of our process. Well, I mean, we're pretty much idle at this point. But we can watch this as we tax the system. Let's actually try to widen this window here. How many megabytes? So we're only using an eighth of our memory. The sketch card isn't as good as the uh, the XR1 Pro out in the workshop, so the frame rate isn't as ideal. I mean, it's it's not bad, but it's not as good. So we have our Maria DB server. Um, that's more over something we'll get installed in a moment. Uh, the first thing we need to go ahead and do is just. Open a web browser and type in localhost. And that's our web server. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is download VS Code because we are going to be doing some development on here. Um, and not a lot of it's going to be done on the machine itself, but there might be a few instances where we have to log in and manually edit a text file. You can never be too sure, so we're going to go ahead and download the dev version. Here. And we're going to show you other way to install uh, an application by Linux. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is open up our file manager. And what we can do is navigate to the downloads where we just downloaded our application here and we're going to right click. We could right click the application itself and we could, you know, but see how this wants to open it with an archiving application. Um, you know, in Windows, you would have, you know, a .exe file. And you'd be able to double click that thing uh, and just, you know, off to the races you go. 
that's not going to happen up here. So what we want to do instead is now that we're here, what I said about navigating through the file structure is right click in the open space. And what we're going to do is click open terminal here. And if you notice, we have squiggly line downloads. And on Win there's in Linux squiggly line. That represents your home directory. So basically, Squiggly line downloads is the same as being in downloads, if that makes any sense. So now that we're in this location, what we want to go ahead and do is use our sudo. And then what we want to do is use D package in this case. So dpkg option dash i. Or if you want to get old school, you could do dash dash install. But I personally prefer just dash i, especially when you're doing this. And really, all you have to do is type in code and hit tab. And that's going to complete the rest of the command for you. Hit enter. Gonna put in your password. There's the second way to install applications on a Linux system. So if we go, if we click up here into applications, we go into development now. See, we have our Visual Studio code. What we, we can do, we're going to go back in here to this browser for just a moment. What we're going to go ahead and do is go to google.com forward slash Chrome. And, you know, I, everybody picks their poison. I don't really have anything typical against Firefox. It's not too bad. I'm just used to Chrome, uh, and my clients are all going to have Gmail accounts uh, as well. So I'm pretty sure they're pretty used to Chrome. So we're just going to go ahead and Chrome. We could use the free Chromium, but personally, I use paid services through Google, so I'm going to install the actual Google. We're going to install that the same way, except for now, this time, it's going to have a problem. So what we're going to do now is do sudo apt update. And it's going to tell us the wrong date. So what we're going to try to do instead is we're going to do sudo apt upgrade and force it to tell us to do it. So now that it's forced us to hear, it says, oh, you, uh, it's uh, a problem with this Google Chrome. It's uh, missing some dependencies and whatnot. So what we need to do is put in our sudo apt and what we're going to do is exactly right there what it tells us to do we're going to do dash dash fix dash broken or hyphen whatever you want to call that and space install and it's going to ask hey we want to install these dependencies we're going to click y type y then hit enter and now that we have that completed if we go back up to applications here and we go down to internet you can see we have good old google of the chrome now we're not going to sign into it yet but we definitely are going to close firefox because there's no reason to have that going we're going to close this. Okay. we're going to keep that open because i'm interested to see uh, once we open, then it drops. We have one tab open, so I'm trying to see exactly. Let's 
So it's definitely a resource hog, if you can see, you know. Oh, hold on a second here. Fall from the waifu.
I wasn't talking that whole time. Wow. I am sorry, you guys, uh, if you had to sit there and watch me <laughs> silently go through all that. I, I do apologize. Uh, we've had a couple of views. Uh, shout out to anybody that's popped in and wondered, what the hell is going on here? What the hell is this dude even doing? Um, essentially, right now, I'm just kind of getting an idea. what our uh, overall performance is. Oh yeah. That fan's kick. That's a good, I mean, 24 FPS, but it only has the little three, uh, three core, three CU, uh, GPU, so I'm not really expecting, you know, worlds of awesomeness out of, especially even, you know, under Linux. And obviously we only have the dual cores and four threads. And we'll check out this Mr. Beast video here. Pretty sure audio set up for this so make sure we turn this down just a little bit or it's gonna feel Hmm. Don't hear any. I don't see any audio playing, you guys. Hmm. Strange. Uh, we did just oh we did just manage to get this installed too so let's make sure we're not just losing our minds new latest man Just like that. Investigate our Was this stuff? Took it all and added it all. Set itself off. So you see that? Oh. 
We should definitely be getting some audio. It's a little in the way. Hey, I saw something. Something happened for a second. Hmm. Now, that's something to figure out at a later date. I really don't care if the audio works over the capture device right now. It's like, what, what do I want to actually try and fix? Uh, at this point, it's like, whatever, if it plays the audio or not. Um, obviously, got some screen tearing here because it's a cheap terrible uh graphics card or uh capture card that we're using just a little twenty dollar hdmi input special we definitely upgrade the, the unit here in the office before long but uh you know the viewport says 720 but we're rendering at 1080p without any drop frames so that's about as much performance as i expected out of this little machine i really wish getting some audio uh, but really not trying to play other people's content either it's not a views thing it's more of a just trying to figure out exactly uh, Oh well, audio. I know the audio uh, works uh, definitely under Windows. It's just something I haven't quite ironed out with this uh, Debian uh, setup quite yet. But I, I do want to try and keep the stream box uh, setup uh, running uh, Debian up here in the office just for the sake of the low resources, the snappy loading, the because I games that I may play on this system up here is going to be like Lich King to log on to our yeah, uh, private server. Uh, if you guys are ever interested in checking that out, you can actually open your favorite web browser and navigate back to our website there. And forward slash But this is stuck. Yay! Crappy keyboard. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, it's got something blocking it. Which it does. Oh, we managed to get it to type though. Okay. Well, hey, there we go. All right. We're at the Lich King. Uh, and then another. Go here. Server status. I'm sure there's nobody on, but snow players are currently online. But if I have any talk later,
Okay, so now if we refresh this page here. There I am. In game, and then uh, if we switch here, I'm going to show you. In there, you can't really see me that well, but you can kind of see the GM tag there above my head. Anybody's interested in um, making something, you know, I'm sure if you've seen videos on YouTube, you've seen stuff about uh, Turtle Way Out on a few of these other you know, popular private servers because they do something that Blizzard uh, will never do and it's allow you to experience one of the coolest moments in the game's history for free. So if you're interested, you can definitely check out this page here you can uh, click on register uh, it's kind of a simple interface here but it all does uh, work uh, it's kind of a work in progress uh, definitely something to check out if you're interested in helping build a community or like uh, to be a gm on the server definitely interested in speaking to anybody especially if they have a few years of game knowledge uh, under their belt but anyways uh, outside of stuff like that i'm kind of testing the system making sure it's all going uh, go ahead and start getting in uh, to actually doing the web server bits here so Trying to remember all of this myself. Yeah, so. Oh, how I can be really hot. I mean, I spent all day in a car. Like, it is nasty and disgusting. Oh, yeah, because I need all that noise. <laughs> Turn on all the noisy stuff.
All right. One of the things we need to go through and see it about. Trying to configure my windows here. A little bit better. Okay, here we go. That's it. So we need to do sudo apt install. Continue to go with the root password for now. Okay, so that allows us to go through and create a basic setup for uh, for the database. We'll add a separate user that is going to be actually doing the adding the WordPress and other databases. Stuff like that. We'll have you know full control, but not full full control. If that makes any sense. That's curious, so. You see the system control. <laughs> Gosh, I'm trying to remember all this stuff off the fly. Uh, I had a bunch of this stuff prepared at one point to do this with the computer that I put into this desk, but obviously things haven't turned out uh, in that manner. So, still nothing, still nothing, no viewers for me. I'm an hour and 42 minutes into talking to himself. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do here is we're actually going to exit 
So I don't want to do anything there just yet, I don't think. So what we want to do here is we're actually going to do sudo app search. Which we, and I'm doing a search on purpose because I want to see what 12 is default. See the package and it just says PHP with nothing else. Jeez. Oh, come on. It's just PHP at. So you know what, we're just going to do sudo apt install b s eight point two. Oh yeah, okay. So its default is eight point two. I'm glad about that. So if we do the hp b, awesome. That is just awesome. So. We're going to install a bunch of stuff here. Okay, so we need a bunch of stuff we're going to have to type out here. So we need to do sudo apt install in, install. Alright, so we need php girl php gd php MB string PHP XML PHP XML RPC PHP soap PHP INTL what else we got here? It's it. So the HP is it. Sip. That looks more impressive. <laughs> that, that looks like I might know what I'm doing. Maybe. Uh, I've been known to mess stuff up before. So. Still good here. Alias. Speed equals clear. See what I did there? I can do it. Let's go to an alias. Um, uh, in. Oops. Sure. <laughs> so now we can do banana update. <laughs> You can't do anything like that. Like, I mean, you, you, can, you can mess, you can set variables and do things. And, you know, it's not like you can't, like, do stuff like that. But it's, it's kind of funny. 
how your bash terminal also kind of operates like its own scripting language slash, you know what I mean? Like, neat stuff that you know, clear the screen with one letter and I can do, uh, I can do, uh, and this is awesome. Don't forget to banana apt upgrade and banana apt update. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stuff. Anyways, back to this boring stuff. Okay, so we have more dependencies uh, from my reading here. Sorry, I, sorry if I get a little quiet. I'll, I'll shut the camera off here for a minute as I read stuff. I, I don't mean to like blankly stare uh, into anything. It's just that I'm uh, also kind of reading here to make sure that I've covered everything. Uh, but of course, we need to banana apt install php. Uh, we need EC2, uh, PHP, uh, so before I get too far into that, I need to see exactly Okay, so we already have MB string, zip, GD, curl, XML. Okay. So we have all these except for. So we need BC two HP Imagic. and HP common. Now we want to put in install lib patching to on PHP. Okay, so.
Okay. Now, in previous versions of Debian, there's always been some sort of user intervention uh, that we have to go through. Some sort of... Uh, Yeah, there's always been some sort of something they had. So let's see if we can actually just get into here. Do a local host port slash HB my course it didn't do it. To do that twice. So, okay, that's obviously there. I didn't explain anything. I hate things sometimes. Look in our files. This directory right here. Okay. Now let's check the other one. Okay.
every time. Uh, this is starting to aggravate a little bit, because I can't... The best way to do it is just to compile it uh, from source, but... Okay, finally I found what I was looking for. I have this uh, written down, but I need to rewrite it now. So what we need to do in here...
Jeez, it's gonna suck so bad. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But he is stuck, so. Alright. So it's Etsy. HP my man. Okay, so open to our terminal here. Then we need to do our pseudo and then in here. This is just for testing purposes here. using Obviously, I changed that. Okay. 
and we're going to have to end with a semicolon, just like a lot of the other programming stuff. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see, it. I see my error. I dent to died. You see it? <laughs> it's a delivery case. You don't actually have to case it, but it's good to case it if you're ever reading back through an SQL statement. Because uh, you can really lose track of uh, that. What, what's doing what? So you know, this is not like color coding. There it is. I'm not going to worry about case and right now. This I will also grant all creative. Asterisk star, asterisk for everything. I went to two different caps here. And oops. Now, we go back up here. Should be able to put it in. Now, so we're going to change that. But that's essentially what you'll do. Now, what we've done thus far, really, and I, I, I popped in a couple of times just to see if anybody's left a, a chat of, of any sort. Obviously, not uh, of yet, because a lot of this hasn't really come apparent yet, and we're too, what, two hours and twelve minutes uh, into the stream here. So, what we've done effectively is we've installed our Apache web server. Uh, and it doesn't really seem, it seems kind of arbitrary at this point in time, but if we open up our VS Code, and we're just going to call this test uh, HTML. We're going to put him just in our own folder for now. Doc type.
Okay, so. Oopsies. Oh, bad. I don't mean to keep doing that. It's difficult to remember which mouse I'm using at which particular time. Okay. Well, we can go ahead and close this out. What we've done, go into our home forward here. Let's test it to see if we open it. Now we see, but this is that file. Blah, 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 blah. So, what we can do. We can close this, and we can actually open a terminal here in this location. So we'll right-click, open a terminal here, and what we want to do is we want to move that file into this directory, right? But if we try to do it through the GUI here, well, notice... it's not going to let us because these are protected files of the file system no paste so what we need to do is we need to do sudo v s uh, html and we need to move it to the In there now we can see it is there. So now if we go to our web browser, let me add a tab here and we do localhost keyboard slash spark you on this keyboard. Now we can see we're actually getting better performance out of it. And if you see up at the top, it's actually at a more normal looking web address and that was just some really quick html code uh, that you can throw together it's obviously nothing fancy yet but you can kind of see how we're kind of beginning to shape something together here So this next part here is uh, another kind of important step that we need to take here. So what we need to do is we need to make another directory here. So what we need to do, sudo mkdir, which is make directory. Our freaking food slashes set up here ahead of time. And then what we need to do is do var www. We're going to do in network. Now we're going to sudo shown, just change ownership big R to indicate we're getting directories.
It's telling me to use the user environmental variable instead of using the traditionally when you're setting this up for Apache, you would use uh I see what it's going for. You see these dollar signs and then a word in all caps, that means you're just using the current uh system environmental variable. R. Okay. Now we need to create a virtual host file. So we need to do the nano, which is a terminal based text editor. We need to do <laughs> so this one's going to be an Etsy Apache 2 sites available. Do game network. I think I just fat think. Okay, and then here to eighty. Server name. This is going to be raw. <laughs> Type it to that. Game network. Alias until we want to actually add this to the internet. Changes in the future once we actually have it in the web domain. It's just a place for we'll for now. now. This parameter, this document parameter. That same thing that we just set up. So R W and Okay, and we're setting up our error logging. We need our custom log. Set this to same place here.
And that completes uh, the virtual host setup, at, at least especially if you're going to be doing one for local folks. So we're going to hit Control S to save. Control X to exit. Just double check some stuff here. So yeah, now that we've done that, we can do another sudo a2n site. We'll put it game network. And what we're going to also do is disable that uh, that default page, the one that we saw here. So yeah, what we want to do there is we're going to come in here, right click, open terminal here real quick, and we will do sudo. F and then everything in this folder. Wrong feed. Close this. We look there, there's nothing. Let's go back here. Notice we have our game network folder now. It's created a directory. You know, we're going to do the opposite now. We're going to do A2 dis site. We're going to do 000, zero, zero hyphen default. Matching to. Doesn't really mean anything right now while we're running locally, anyways. Yeah. So now, oh god. Okay. So what we've done now is we've installed. MySQL, and we've also installed PHP functionality. So now we have server-side processing ability. So we need to test to make sure that that is also works. So what we need to do here is do a sudo nano bar www game net Info dot and here we want to do the HP info parentheses, close parentheses. Semicolon and control S. Now, if we go up here, I go to game and oh. 
Yeah, we need to check that. Okay, we did. Okay. So, game network dot local port slash info dot So, we know we're good to go with our PHP processing. So, really, all that's left to do now is to get our web browser here. We're just going to go to WordPress. Click Get WordPress. Download WordPress. Okay. Move to our download folder here. Okay, and then inside here is what we're interested in. So we're going to open terminal here. And we want to sudo move everything. Make sure we do our dash R. So that's capital R. Right? Because we're moving directories or do we just Yeah, okay. I'm thinking of Chum. So yeah, Chum. Now, I'm fairly certain, sure, go back up here, navigate to name network dot local. We get our WordPress set up. Let's call everything. We're call this GN WP game. Okay, so we'll do come over here. We're going to create a database. Do that in WP. Come back over here. Try this again. And come back. So I was correct in my assumption. So what we need to do this right here. So this needs to be changed to www hyphen data www data. Yeah. 
Matter, it's not gonna be open to internet, anyways. There we go, just like that. If we go to visit site. Fully functioning blog, uh, but you have all of this ready to go. And there's a few things that you can do uh, with a full fledged setup like this. Not only do you have your own WordPress site that you can prepare and get ready to actually pass through the actual internet, you know what I mean? But once you actually have it passed through the internet, you can host media here and the limits are how big of a drive and how powerful a computer you have running this. So, you know, when you release a video or something like that to YouTube or elsewhere, it's public domain. Everybody can have access to it. Uh, but if you, and, and there's limits too, you know. Uh, so, but if you want a, a video, say, that you want to post to your Patreon or you want to post, you know, somewhere and you don't want to have it open and you want people to have. To have limited access to it uh, instead of putting it on YouTube, you can put it on your own server and then just make everybody to that. Uh, it, it's not going to increase your, you know what I mean? Like it, it's a really good way of posting gigabytes of data files because all you really have to do is slap a SATA SSD in here or a bigger NVMe drive and you can post, you know, your own videos on your own site and have a place to put your monetized stuff that nobody else has access to. And that's where you post your on video, which is a really nifty workaround for paying exuberant amounts of online storage. Uh, just run on your WordPress site. Uh, if you want to go headless, you can also run headless CMSs, or you can even run Strappy and run an API that just catalogs all the videos, or, you know what I mean? Like has a link to the actual file folder that is hosting my stuff. But if we go in here to plugins or appearance, we go to themes, we go to add new. Look, this is all here. We'll just put this one on for now. Popular effects. We'll activate it. Go back here to themes. What we're gonna do is theme details. We're just gonna delete these other ones for now. All right, now if we go back to our main page here, customize. We still have quite a bit of setting up to do here. Home page settings. Yeah, that's what we look at the static page. Now all this should change quite dramatically. But it looks like we're missing some plugins here.
Okay, so they even have a like a guide that walks you through once you get acclimated to setting it up to actually look like it does in the thing. But let's let's go for an easier thing. So Any of these should really work. I mean, let's. Okay, so this is going to be the same. Yep, I know what it is. Okay. So what we gotta do here, we go in here, we're gonna go to settings. Yeah. Oh, that's already there. It's set. I know what it is. If we go here, it'll even say it. We go to site health. It's quite a bit of stuff I don't have it activated. There we go. Painting service. All the good looking ones will be pro and then all the And obviously, if we have any issues, we can totally nuke this whole thing and, you know, it's not near as long going over it the second time. You know what I mean? Getting this, uh... Is my stream frozen? Okay, it was like, okay. Just like that. And this is fully uh, customizable. We can change a bunch of this stuff uh, to fit a bunch of different needs. This can be customized uh, to fit your business. Uh, and then once said and done, once this is actually built into an actual thing, uh, you guys will be able to access this. It'll be uh, gamer.network uh, eventually, I think. Uh, but for now, we have all the groundwork uh, laid. Uh, so we have the web server running here, so we can literally just unplug this thing, plug it into the router via Ethernet, and bam, all we got to do is IP into the thing. Uh, we don't even have to do that. We'll just go to, once it's plugged into your local network, you can go to this gamer network.local, uh, and your computer should be able 
to find it. And if it doesn't right away, then you have to put your HTTP forward slash forward slash. Uh, but once you get yourself acclimated, it's actually going through this process, installing the database server, installing the web server. Obviously, I need to do it uh, more times and come up with a more streamlined process. We'll definitely visit this in a future uh, live stream. But this is the essential building blocks. Just, I mean, a couple hours of uh, commands going back and forth. You can get this down to less than an hour setup time for a new machine, uh, for a hard machine, and then even less so uh, for a virtual machine. And with batch scripting, you can actually script everything that I've done uh, this evening. So I will actually have a link uh, for that, I think, at some point uh, in the future, either uh, in this video after the fact, because uh, I'm going to be building a script to help do this all automatically uh, through shell script for anybody uh, for Debian 12 specifically, because uh, I've had a lot of stability and, and I've had a lot of success on this operating system running uh, games even. Uh, like I showed you my Linux desktop, the Debian 12 I'm running right now on this computer. Uh, see Neverwinter actually linked up there. Uh, now Neverwinter is an older game uh, for sure, but still a full 3D game and it plays a, a just about every Steam Deck title, I, I would think. Just about, you could run quite a few of them on the 1650. Uh, but it's Linux and it's an NVIDIA card, so you run into like just little quirks. But most of them, you can see, install and vent tickets. I think that this was actually the perfect template to go with. Uh, we do uh, events and stuff like this out of Ready Up. Uh, which is ultimately where this will end up building. So I really like this template. Um, Joey, if you see this at some point, you'll have to leave a comment. But I'm liking the framework that I have here. Everything is ready to go for you. I will bring it up to the store tomorrow uh, and deliver it, obviously, with uh, different credentials. So I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Um, I need to be able to go we go through all of this here uh, and go through that setup with credentials that obviously I didn't share on live stream. So um, I hope you guys learned something. I'm sorry, it's kind of all over the place. Uh, it's, it's been a, at least a half a year or so <laughs> since I've done the full setup from start to finish. So um, definitely put it in a more streamlined format in a streamlined video. Uh, I hope somebody learned something. Other than that, hope you guys have a good night. Be safe, and I will catch you in the next one.